Marling is going to talk about uh, uh, how to make a diorama is a, is a learning kit from uh, Willen Silix. Hello Marling. Hi, how guys doing? So it's a, it's, it's a learning kit from uh, Willen Silix and last week we built a tree if you remember and today we're going to build the rest. We're going we're to show you guys how, how we to get to got this. to this point. So you probably remember I want this one here so you guys can see this better. You probably remember the tree that we made last week, um, and then we detailed the rest of the diorama, and, and we're going to quickly demonstrate how we got these results by That's trying right. to do the same thing again. Absolutely. Let's see what happens. So, okay. this may take 15, 20 minutes. About 15 minutes. Okay, so I'll park these on the side here. And I'll put this up here. All right, all we've got of our supplies ready so to go. But there's a little bit of. Uh, of uh, material that we need. So that's a base. So the base, I, we talked about this last week. So guess. this is basically, um, it's a piece of styrofoam that's been covered with Woodland Scenics plastic cloth. And I'll just bring a few, few items over here. Let me pour on. So that's a mold, that's a plastic cloth. Yeah, so mold here. Yeah, over styrofoam, any kind of modeling or sculpting yeah. foam, um, you can apply plaster cloth as a right. finishing surface and then you can create a rock surface like this using one of these plaster molds. And the great thing is that you can use these over and over and over again. Because you pop it up. Very like easy to release. So, yeah. And uh, yeah, you can wash it, reuse it. And that's yeah. how you would get to this point. That's right. So and then... You it was pre-done already by Willa Sinning, so they give you this ready to go. That's right. Yeah, so we're just gonna, we're gonna go ahead and, and show you how to apply color and, and, and scenery to it. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna paint the rock and we're going to use some Woodland Scenics um, liquid pigments. And these are the ones that we're going to use. Uh, so we've got burnt umber, uh, black, and yellow ochre. And these three colors will transform this into something that yeah. looks much more realistic. And we've got these mixed up and ready to go. So I've just got a little bit in a cup and a foam brush. And we're going to use a technique they call leopard spotting. And we're just going to go over the rock and just dab lightly just in a few different spots. So it's not, not uniform. We don't want a, a uniform look. We just want it nice and random. Uh, probably cover about a third of this rock with this color. I'll have a question for you guys in the meantime. <clears throat> with this, is it similar to all the other paints that we've done, that our previous videos have shown about the mixture to thin it out, or is it already pre-thinned and you don't need to do anything to This it? is pre-thinned. I presume you could thin it further right. with water if you needed to. Yep. Um, but the because these are already designed like like a pigment in that sense, um, as, as a wash, it generally doesn't need to be done. Uh, and then we've got burnt umber, and then we're going to do the same thing again. We're just going to go right over it with our foam brush and just sort of cover some of the areas we might not have hit with the uh, with the yellow ochre paint, and if it runs, that's good because it will it will gravity will will force it down into all the cracks and, and crevices, and it'll highlight those spots a lot more. So there we go. We've got we've got the two colors, and they're working well together. And then we're going to tie the whole thing together with some black pigment. So this bottle here, I'll just use this one. And this will work, sort of highlight all of those recessed areas more, and tie the colors together. It was very easy to do, and very fun. Definitely. Yeah. That's impressive how, how it actually comes together really well. So yeah, it just runs right on, right on in there, in all the different yeah. spots. So that's a, this is a washer. This is a acrylic, I think, uh, water-based type paint, which is thin, and um, and uh, it, it does give this kind of semi-transparent effect. You get different uh, depth of, of color, really. So you overlay this to the to the ochre color, and you can get this kind of different different shades, and and does give a really good effect as the real rocks are. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, this is this will need to dry, and that will take take time over the next hour or so. Yeah. But that's that's a big improvement Definitely. over over bare um, bare plaster. Definitely. So now we've done that, we can move on to our earth undercoat, and this is a product that you would use to simulate the surface of of the ground. Um, and they they also sell a green earth undercoat as well, um, depending on how lush you want to make your yep. your diorama base. 
we've got some of that mixed up already, and we'll go ahead and give that a go. So we're going to paint the full the full area now with this one. Is that correct? That's correct. Yeah. So I guess again, you can use different colors even at this point. If you have different type of brims, you can use a similar technique to give um, a, a bit more depth, if if you wish. You need uh, to add a bit more black. Right. So you can you can get you know a bit of uh, different colors here. So. That's the preparation. As you see, this is a typical kind of operation you do when you do any diorama to prepare your base. So for the competition, um, as you prepare your base for your diorama, you can use very much the similar technique to create a base for your, you know, perhaps a tank or, or an aircraft. Um, and that's uh, really what you can do. I just want to get nice, nice even coverage. Definitely. Over the whole thing. Yeah. And, and the good thing is even if the paint runs away a little bit, it's fine because it's, it's the natural kind of scenery that you're recreating. So so there's no issue with that because in nature everything is it's, it's, it's random effectively. So sometimes, um, you know, it's, it's it's not as detailed, doesn't have to be as precise as uh, when you paint perhaps an aircraft. This is uh, definitely a bit more um, uh, you know, random. Yeah, you get, a, you get a little bit more room for error for in, error, a, in a sense that you might not have applied something or it might not have run exactly how you anticipated. But in a way, that randomness, you're right, it, it does result in a more natural look and feel to it. Um, another thing is you'll also want to apply like your lighter colors first. Yes. So like black will be something that you'll put on after you've put on your lighter brown shades. Um, and th those are colors that you could mix or you could dilute more with water. And you can just study photographs or you could go out and study what like the yeah. rocks and vegetation looks like where you live or where you want to model. Um, so that you get it to look exactly how you want. Okay, so we have got, I'll just quickly wipe that up. Perfect. So that's got our dirt cover, or ground cover on it. And now it's time to add some vegetation. All right, so time to put the, the grass actually, the green. That's right. Let me just quickly grab that. I'll ask a question again yeah. in the meantime for you guys. So of course. when you are applying, applying the, the grass after painting, is uh, with this particular selection, do you need to give the paint some time to dry or is it actually better to do it while it's still a little bit wet better, to really attach it? Better to do it while it's still a bit wet. Yeah. Because the paint will in a way work almost like an adhesive in some, in some ways. Yeah. Um, but we're actually, speaking of adhesives, we're actually going to be using one now. So we're going to be using uh, Woodland Scenics, Scenic Cement. So this is like a PVA style glue Ooh, that dries yeah. matte and it's already been diluted so it's quite thin. It's got quite a watery consistency to it and this is sort of like the main glue that you'll be using for large scenery areas. That's right. And, and uh, so you say that dries matte and clear which yes. is very important because uh, uh, you don't have that yellowish effect of other glues and, and the fact that it's thin to the right point it's really important because you eliminate another another problem, which is thing how far to go. Because yes. if it's too thin, nothing will stick and will run away. If it's too thick, it's going to be really hard to get coverage. So, so we'll um, we'll make a point of trying to avoid the rock. We've got it in a tiny spray bottle, so you could use any kind of little spray bottle. Or Woodland Scenics yep. even makes their own spray bottles that you can buy, um, and we'll just kind of spritz it everywhere that we're going to put grass. So which is pretty much everywhere except for on the rock. I just wanna wanna get a nice a pretty coverage. good coverage. Yep. And everything looks nice and wet and call that good for now. And then for our grass we're going to be using uh, Woodland Scenics Fine Turf. I'll just find the one with the fine turf. I've got a bottle of that, uh, a bag of that here. So here we go. So we've got our green grass. Now, um, Woodland Scenics makes bags of turf in different consistencies, so like fine, medium, and coarse, depending on what you want to do and what scale you're working with. And um, so we've, we've got it in this little container here with some holes poked in the lid to sort of sprinkle it on the diorama. And we'll just go ahead and we'll go over all the spots where there was glue. Just a nice, a nice um, liberal coating. 
I guess this is one of those few times where you won't have to use the static applicator. Well, that's right. Yeah, I mean, you could use this and then put the static grass over, over the top. Over this, yeah. Yeah. If you want to give more depth, if you need like, uh, like taller grass, or deeper grass, you can use uh, uh, the static grass applicator and put an extra an extra layer. But this is kind of the base that gives that green effect. Um, you can use tufts as well if you don't have a static grass applicator or if you don't want to go down that path. There's many ways to add more detail actually. So you'll get a little bit of a mess, but if you've got a workspace that you can move, or if you get a piece of large paper and fold the center line down the That's middle, right. then you can just dump that straight into the bin. But so yeah. far... Yeah, it is. Look at this. So that was literally less than 10 minutes. Yeah. First, and, first layer. And then it already does give like a really good effect. All right, so we'll move on to our next bit, and we'll actually spray a little bit more glue on top. And this is just to seal everything in. So you might lose a little bit because the, the air that you displace when you're squirting it will kind of push some of that loose turf away. But once this dries, what's here will stay here. That's you right. You don't have to worry about that. It's fully sealed. Okay, so we've done that. And now we're going to do some, some fun parts. You can participate with this too if you'd like, Nick. I can't. I can't. We're gonna. I'm do, looking forward to this. We're gonna do some bushes. Right. So we're gonna we're gonna use um some woodland scenic. It's it's um. I just grab the, the container. It's actually the same material we used last week for the tree. Is that correct? It's very similar. Very similar. So it's like a similar consistency but smaller. And these are just medium green yeah. bushes. A bit more dense, effectively. And and, uh, um, and really, is in uh, in uh, you see the bushes actually comes in clumps like this. And. Uh, you can break them up, you can jar them together. And so in this case, what we need different glue, do we? We need a different glue. We need something that's tackier. Yes. And um, we're going to be using what Woodland Scenics just calls scenic glue. That's right. Um, this has a, we've got a little, little sample bottle, so we don't have to use the big one. Um, and the idea would be to apply this directly to a bit of bush like that you want to use. There you go. So we've just got just a little clump here that we randomly picked up and you just dab it with some glue and you just stick that on the scenery wherever you want that to live perfect look at that we'll do a couple more and uh, and again, big, big bushes, smaller bushes, different colors as well. Because um, wooden scenic start their range, they have lots of different different uh, shades from you know deeper green, lighter green, uh, kind of a yellowish, more orangey type color. So there's a huge range. And, and the best part when starts when you start mixing them as well. You can have uh, like we did last week on the on the tree. We had the tree, and then we put some uh, uh, yellow kind of fine turf on top of it to mm. to give that extra depth. So yeah, any season or any kind of region in the region. world you want to you want to represent, you can you can do that fairly easily. That's right. Because there's so many different colors available. And we'll be sealing everything again with some more scenic yeah. cement. So if things aren't glued down really well to start, then we'll give it an extra extra, an extra helping hand. Yeah, definitely. Again, we're doing this um, reasonably quick for the purpose of the, tu the tutorial. So, so if you have a bit more time, you know, when you're doing on your own, then you can actually, you know, make sure that everything dries up at some point, and then you see what what hasn't, uh, what, what what doesn't have enough glue, and you can reapply and, and repeat effectively. Absolutely, like this is something that you probably want to take a little bit more time doing, but That's right. you could you could create something like this well within half an hour. That's right. And have results that you'd probably be really happy with. So we won't do all the bushes because there's a lot there, and we'd be That's here all right. day. But I think that's a really good start. So let's see if we can bring this up on the camera again, like this. As you can see. There we go. All right, so what's next here? All right, the next thing we're going to do is, because we just have the bushes and we just have the fine turf, yep. we're going to add some denser turf to it. Right. Um, and I'll just quickly grab that. And we're going to be using medium green coarse turf. So like the fine turf, same color or a similar color, but just a thicker consistency, right. and that just gives things a bit more of a variety as far as texture 
is concerned. But before we do that, we're actually going to, to spray with the, with the scenic cement one more time, just to sort of lock everything, everything into place, place and also to give the um, coarse turf something to stick to. So everything but the rock, unless you want things to stick to the rock. Okay. And we'll just sort of break up little bits and just sort of sprinkle it just all over. Sort of let it fall where it wants to fall if you're happy with that. I guess something you can do it over over you know a uh, few steps. So you can do it and then spray and then have a look if you're happy and then you can add again. So it's not uh, you know you have multiple kind of opportunity to uh, add more detail to this. So it's not uh, a one one chance kind of activity. It's very much something that you build up layer by layer, um, sort of as this has demonstrated. Yeah. Where it's just layers of paint upon layers of paint and then layers of vegetation. Yes. Um, and, and you just sort of build it up because things in nature aren't uniform in color, right. they're not uniform in shape. Um, and as long when you have that textural and col color variety, it looks a lot more convincing. Absolutely. Um, and then the next thing we are going to do is, if you remember the tree that we made last week, we are going to put that on here now. So I'm just going to poke a small hole. In the, I think it probably would look good right here. Middle. Absolutely. Right in the middle. Top. At the top. There we go, poke a small hole, and we'll be using our, our Woodland Scenics glue again. Not the, not the right oh, there it is, perfect. Right there. And we will just cover, cover the end, that little pointy bit. We'll take the base off of the tree if you don't want the tree to just stand up. And we'll put some of this on. And then we'll stick that right where we've made the hole, if I can see where I put it. It looks somewhere there. There it is. That's it. Done. Okay. So we've got our tree in there and just one more thing to do. And that is just like we did last week. Yep. Where we use that really fine turf. Jeez. Uh, yellow. Yellow grass. And we're just going to lightly sprinkle that just all over just to sort of give it the effect of like maybe there's some some like dead grass That's or right. blossoms or weeds so it's not all uniform and then one final coat because oh, I think blue. this is pretty good That's yeah hard. of scenic cement and that will effectively lock Seal everything, everything out. we've done in place and I guess at this point you let it dry overnight Yep. And uh, and uh, if you want, the next day you can apply glue again and just add more more details. Absolutely. Um, and then the next step after that, if you wanted to, you could do the static grass. The static grass. Absolutely. Absolutely. So let's see if we can bring this up. That was. Here we go. So that's the one we did. That's the one that Marlon did. At Tom. So put a bit more a bit more time into that. And uh, here we go. Yeah, that just demonstrates how quickly you can build something that looks quite realistic um, using simple materials that are very right. user-friendly because um, Woodland Scenics essentially makes a solution to every kind of Definitely. scenery modeling issue you could run across. Absolutely. So. And yeah. the best part of this is if you're doing a diorama, you can do this for kind of any kind of diorama. So it, it doesn't take too much to actually put your model that you build within a scene and give a, give a bit of a history, a bit of a story behind it. And as you see, it's a matter of 15 minutes. You can do, you know, you put grass here, you can do dirt with the same kind of, uh, kind of tools. Instead of using the grass, use the fine, uh, some, some fine um, kind of gravel or, 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 or sand, and you can achieve a similar result or, you know, kind of a dusty, dusty environment. So, brilliant. Well, that's right. right. They've got, they've got um, rocks and talus and, and things. If you want to make deserts or if that's you want right. to make snowy environments. There's snow as well, yeah. Or like, um, Europe in autumn with lots of orange Absolutely. and yellow. Everything's, Absolutely. everything's doable.